because it's my thing. It's, it's my thing. It can be anybody's it's thing. thing. It can be anybody's thing. Welcome, everybody, to the Board it's and Scale thing. Podcast. It's my thing. We have another amazing it's show today thing. for you guys. While these two argue about whose thing the clap sync is, I will enter into the frame. <laughs> That's what it says. Like, do you know you're not in the frame? Uh, I definitely knew that. It was purposeful. Absolutely. No, it wasn't. It was like a surprise. He came in by surprise. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Board and Scale podcast. You have us three lovely gentlemen here today with you. Uh, Of course, me as always. Uh, And then these two guys. We have a couple topics to talk about today. Not really, honestly, not even really topics. Just um, rambling. Just a little bit of rambling about how our week went, the uh, games we played, maybe some highlights, uh, maybe some extra content. Um, do you want to give a quick shout out to the folks with 210 GameCon, Aubrey and Derek for the hat? Very cool merch. I'm excited for the show in October. And uh, if you guys haven't heard of it, go and check them out on Instagram at 210 GameCon. Get ready for the show. Yeah, so I wanted to start off this episode and talk about some of our highlight plays. Yeah. I want to talk about Kanban Eevee. Canius Banyan. I really like that game a lot. And when we played it, it stuck with me for like five days. That's awesome. It Yeah. It was, I really enjoyed it. <clears throat> it clicked. Pretty quickly, it looks like a lot. It is a lot. Um, but it's a lot of it, symbology to take in yeah. at once. It clicked really quick, but like third turn, I was like, okay, I see what's happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I already like worker placement, so that was just a bonus. And the theme is really cool too, like building cars. I haven't seen that. Side thing of that is worker placement the most common. Type of game? Uh, I don't think so. Because I feel like you say, oh, I like worker placements. It's 50% of it's games. It's very common, for sure. Of all specific, like, mechanisms in a game, worker placement, to me, feels, like, so heavy in, in, in everything. It's definitely top five. It might just be a bias because you enjoy it, so you gravitate towards games that have that a lot. That is most definitely almost assuredly the case because <laughs> yeah. I love worker placement games. Yeah. It'd be interesting because like you can see the different mechanisms on BGG for a game. They, they list like all of them and there's a bunch of like small obscure ones and whatnot. It'd be interesting to see if there's a way to probably would be to, to see like how many games of a certain type. Just in, in the straight up list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you could, cause you can sort the, you can sort their collection by those. Like if you go in through the mechanism, like find the game, pick the mechanism, click the mechanism and then you get a list of games um because i remember when we were doing um was it deck builders i think Mm -hmm. we wanted to do a bunch of deck builders one night and i was like all right cool like what are the top 20 deck builders on bgg and it actually puts them together for you clank i don't remember it was all on the list um we ended up playing moonrakers and paperback paperback and um Star Realms and Star Realms is so good. Mm-hmm. It's classic. Even if it's very like small, like Dune, not like a, it's not like a whole bunch of uh, deck builder. But the fact that like it you has... throw like three or four cards in your deck, it's a which deck it just changes your game, you know, slightly. But mm-hmm. I mean, if you're only getting three cards in your deck in Dune Imperium, you're doing a terrible job. Well, that sucks because I don't ever get that many <laughs> cards. I haven't. You I don't think I've won the game. Every single turn, you know I don't what think I mean? I've won the game. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know what? Yeah, if you follow, the there stories. is a lot more deck building than <laughs> yeah, I thought. There's a decent amount, and, there was. and it's also worker placement. Yep. Yeah. Literally, the combination of mine and Kenzie's favorite, like types of games. Although I kind of feel like she's drifting away from deck building, but I'm not going to say that for her. I'll let her. You know, have you played Dune Imperium? Way. I have. Yeah. Okay. We've played it a few times. Um Recently, well, not recently, a while ago, bought Immortality because oh. we heard it like really, you know, made the game even better. So because of that, we were like, oh, well, let's play again, refresh ourselves before adding the expansion. But we have since only played the base, you know, a couple times because it's always too long in between. But sure. it's a good game. Yeah. 
Um, oh, are you going to play it again soon? Yeah, we're going to play it again soon for the top five for the Battle of the Games. Um, okay, so Kanban is your highlight play for the week. It was a good game, too. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. It took me a lot longer to, to figure out what was going on, but I was also... <laughs> My face was melting from allergies, and so oh, that's true. <laughs> you having a bit of a rough time. Yeah, it was a bit of a. It was definitely like a, like the the mindset was hard to hard to enter in. And by the time I started to figure it out, I realized I was like a step behind where I needed to be every time I figured out where I needed to be. Um, but like like Dwayne, I think I I spent some time thinking about it afterwards and being like, yeah, this is this is a good game. I really enjoy it. Like I want to play it more. And I'm glad you own it because <laughs> I don't think there's anything about that game that's worth $120, $130. Content wise, it's cardboard and wood, man. I'm pretty sure we paid for that too. Like we I, paid that price for it. I'm sure you did. I mean, like if it if, if I ever saw it come on, on a sale of like of anything, like maybe less than hundred dollars, but even a hundred dollars, I mean it's literally just cardboard and wood. It's not a plastic component in that whole fucking thing. The the I take that back. The only plastic is the, the game uh, trace. The game trace. I don't even know if they're if they are game trace. Like the brand game well, trace. Well, oh yeah, but the the inserts or hey, whatever. Da, is the, there's a tiny is little the, die cast metal car in there. Is the pacer car? The pace car is metal. But that was a bonus one, wasn't it? It was a bonus. Oh. It there's comes with a regular wooden one. one. Yeah, it's yeah. just a wooden one. Um yeah, way too much for that. It's I just, wonder it's not worth it. I wonder why. Is that how much all of them are? Like yeah, they're all they're all hundred something dollars. Damn. Yeah, the, they had the um, they had the Lacerda collection bundle. It was like six of them, seven of them maybe for a thousand dollars on sale. Shh, fucking Christ! It was something like that, something close to a thousand dollars. Um, they do. I was like, man, that's crazy. Because they release them on Kickstarter, right? Um, or am I making that up? I think it's just their they do retail release. Okay. That might be another. There's another think, company I'm thinking of that does re- like does Kickstarter, and every time they do, they they release all of their old games as available, and they're just Queen like Games exorbitantly expensive. Queen Games is one they do their Stefan failed, you know, all of his his games. They do the City series and all that stuff, mm-hmm. which I've never played any of them. I'm kind of, but I almost backed that out of like FOMO. Kind of glad I didn't because people are like, I don't know if this was worth the money, you know? Yeah. You have to like really love the game. I feel like so, like Castle Burgundy, we backed that knowing we already liked that game and we wanted a facelift. You also knew, like from a pure content point of view, though, the money you were spending, you were getting in plastic content, right? Like yeah. the well, value upgraded, the base value of the game was there, right? Where like, if you don't like Kanban, right, it's not worth it from a purely component <coughs> point of view. So I just feel like that changes the market for the game. But I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. I think it's fine. You know, if it's not worth it to you, it's not worth it to you. Yeah. Um, Regardless of all the negativity we just spewed, that was... <laughs> it's a great game. It's just, you, it's $120, $130. It is, it is prohibitively expensive, yeah. Like you can get two to three, maybe even more than that, games of equal complexity. That's you know, side. <laughs> okay, but okay. Yeah, you want to play a little army guys? <laughs> I mean, song? like even but like complexity wise, like there are plenty of games. Like how much does how much does Dominant Species <clears throat> cost? I think it's like seventy eighty. So you can get that and something else for the yeah. price of that. Yeah. Do you like Dominant Species? I don't know. I haven't played it. Oh my gosh, I know you dude. played it, and I know you like it. I so it. it's your number one. So context. I love it, but um, anyway. so what was your kind of, uh, highlight play? Um, I know we're gonna talk about it, so I'm gonna save that one. Um, Is it Twilight? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I mean, every time we get Twilight to the table, is an exciting, exciting adventure. Because I mean, like you know, from the from the the top five battle of the games, you know, like I, it was my number five, but I moved it to my number six because I was like, well, Just it's so hard to get to the table, so. And whether it conspired to try to try to try to prohibit us, um, but um, you know, technically, um, it's technically within the last week. But uh, Barcelona uh, was oh. another really fun one. I really enjoyed getting to play that one. Um, and then we just played Revive 
Um, so honestly, all those were, were really entertaining, like a lot of complexity, a lot of stuff where you're like, okay, I'm not sure I understand everything right away. And, but you know, pretty quickly like, Oh, okay. It just cracks itself open and you're like, yeah, I get, I get this. And yeah, it's really, it's it. really, um, I mean, these are my I games. Both of them. He did win both of them. Fucker. But, Oh, censor. Anyways, oh, I already this said, is a, I this is not once. a children's show. Yeah. This is a family we're show. To, we're up to f- three, three now, four fucks. Wow. <clears throat> Um, you got like me all. PG-13. You got me all squirrel, squirrel brain now. Yeah, we're we're rated R now at this point. Anyways, well, look at this guy yawning over here. We are so boring to him. I don't he know if it's just falling asleep. He's a weirdo, CB baby. Oh, it is eleven thirty. It's eleven thirty. What time did you wake up? You want a cup of warm milk? I'll put him. To, he'll put him out. <laughs> Snore in the pot a little bit. Nine, nine, <laughs> eight, nine. <laughs> Okay. Um, so, do you work out at least? Nope. Okay. Wow. IKEA really took it's it a out break of break day. This guy went to IKEA. It was a break. for the very first time ever. He'd never been to IKEA before, and he didn't get the Swedish meatballs or the lingonberry soda or a Calyx shelf, or a Cal- which is the staple of gamerness. We were going to eat afterwards. Um, Stupid. Yeah. Where did they go to eat? The place where they. They have friends who work, and one of them works there. Could have gone there anytime, literally anytime. Swedish I can go to balls? IKEA anytime. Yeah, but you're not gonna. Why wouldn't I? Because you're not gonna go to IKEA for for Swedish meatballs. I live ten minutes from IKEA. Okay, All right. that's so cool. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, you want to take a bet on how long it's gonna be until he goes to get some Swedish meatballs from IKEA? How long do you think it's gonna be before Dwayne? Goes to IKEA to get Swedish meatballs. Hey, I'll go fucking tomorrow. For the, no, 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 no. No, for I'm not those, going tomorrow. For those of you, you, you guys don't know this, right? This is recorded <clears throat> the day before we're going to try to do this. So it won't come out for you guys until after we've already tried. We're going to try to go to FlingCon tomorrow. They have a few tickets left. Um, <laughs> FlingCon is a local convention for gamers to go and play games. There's a few people there testing out their games. Um, they do giveaways, raffles, um, stuff like that. But the way that they do their tickets is you buy them online in advance. And then if they have any left over, you have to show up in person. So we're going to try and show up on Saturday, the busiest day. <laughs> I already got some recon and I know that there was six tickets at the time that I asked for Saturday. So we're going to go early in the morning, try and get there. Anyways, if that fails, we go to Ikea and pick up some Swedish meatballs. Damn. I'm down. All right, What's call up? Me, hit me up if you do. <laughs> well, I'll be early as shit still because this is the this is the best part about this whole thing. Your plan, you're gonna get there at what time? Oh my gosh, probably what? we probably won't get there until like eight thirty, but it opens at eight. Okay, so you're gonna get there at eight. By the way, how far is the drive? It's forty. It's forty minutes going only forty going towards his house. It's thirty eight if I just go straight there. It's only that's actually impressive. I thought it was not be too bad than that. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, well that's still like twenty five minutes further than you like to drive for anything. The reptile show I go to is kind of out that way too. It's like fifty five minutes. Yeah, but think about remember when you showed up to Matt Nally's <sighs> and you couldn't get in because they weren't we weren't there. Yeah, but this would be different. I'm on a mission. But know. what happens when you get there? You drive forty minutes to FlingCon. And they IKEA. don't have tickets, and it's eight thirty in the morning, and IKEA is not <laughs> serving Swedish meatballs yet. When do they open? Probably not. Probably not till like ten. I have no idea. I'm sure they're open relatively early on a Saturday, but they're probably not making <laughs> meatballs in the cafeteria until like we go to main event somewhere nearby. Do a round of bowling, then go to IKEA. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just salvage that day. Yeah. Anyways. Um, I don't even know what that was about. But basically, we're going to try. If we don't do Flint Con, we're going to try and get some meatballs. You know, turn, turn it into opens at 10 a.m. Oh, oh man. Oh, yeah, you mind. guys are going to have. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Maybe we'll go to Black Potion, try and make it's some kind of, of W way. out of it. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Anyways. <laughs> we'll just kiss. Was Did I? Did we interrupt your... Or, or you're up. going to... No, because you talked about Barcelona. I'm going to move on to mine yeah. because you guys <laughs> might be surprised by this. My highlight play of the last week, Birdwatcher. Mm. Hey! It's a game that, doesn't surprise me at all. that Dwayne brought over. 
it is a essentially set collection, yeah. action selection, set collection game um, where you just are trying to collect various sets of different kinds of birds in various amounts that score different ways. There's also unique birds. There's also publications that you can grab that will give you extra points depending on certain criteria. It's just a very simple um like very streamlined game that has to me so much charm in the art because I'm a little bit of a bird guy so I like seeing pretty birds um but yeah that was my highlight play for the week it's what the birds look like every single one of them wow that's a chick <laughs> the only chicks that will get near kevin <laughs> ah. anyway are the fake ones i draw on whiteboards <laughs> Um, so Kevin alluded to it earlier, we we'll move on, uh, kind of our joint highlight play. I feel like twilight Imperium. We do, we talked so much about, we'll never get to play this. Finally. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hit it. Finally. We got to play <laughs> twilight Imperium. Um, I will. I've played it before. You guys, neither of you have played it before, right? <laughs> I've played it dozens of times. Oh, then why did you? <laughs> You've played it dozens of times? Yeah. Uh, I don't care that you won then. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. This bastard won it. Yeah. He, I've took, played... he, he mind gamed his way all through <laughs> it so that on the on the last turn he could be like, that's weird. I got six points and now I'm at 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I, I thought you. I thought that was your first game, and I was like, "No, hold on, no freaking way." How? No, because I have the you, brain how, of a squirrel. How, okay, can, I literally said it was one of my you like my number five game. I've never played this game before, but oh, I right. think it's my number five. <laughs> I have no idea why I thought that. Then, yeah. Why that was in my brain yeah. that I I had some kind of advantage being the only person I played it before. <laughs> no, I I played third edition a bunch. Um, back in the day, and then I picked up fourth edition when it came out, and um, the uh, you know the when I was at West Point, the cadets really enjoyed it. So we would do special like days where you know we would have them sign up because you wanted everybody to have an opportunity to play, but you can only play with six players at a time. And uh, so we had the fourth edition copy and a third edition copy, and we'd run them at the same time. Dang, who got yeah. who had to play third edition? <laughs> The people who weren't fam- like popular, so, no, it was, the not popular kids. So the fourth edition was mine, and it was one of the things where I was like, "Well, I'm bringing this one. I'm playing my <laughs> yeah." Own you're playing copy. the fourth edition, and the other thing was is that like if we finish this one and they're still going, I'm not waiting to like let them finish the game. Like I'm, we're packing this one up and I'm going, you know, home. Um, so we tried to balance it out because we did this multiple weeks in a row, where we do, you know, hey, like so you have them both going and you try to balance it out. So like some people would get, you know, play the third edition. Some people do the fourth edition. So I have probably like <sighs> at least a dozen, maybe more plays under my belt. I don't care at all about losing to you then. Yeah, uh, I'm fine you shouldn't. <laughs> I was so upset. I thought you were like first time player. All of a sudden you're just going to pull it out your butt. That makes me feel a little better then. Yeah. <laughs> you guys get beat by the most experienced player. Yeah, that's fine. That's a game where it definitely matters. And it was close because you two guys were right there. I'm sure you're going to talk hey, about Isaiah it. Hey, Isaiah was competitive too in spirit. <laughs> Shout out to boy. He was um, such a peaceful player too. He was. He was just like, you want stuff? Here, take my commodities. <laughs> he gave commodities he just, away he like He gave crazy. commodities out like crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was really fun. Uh, we've got... <laughs> I've got kind of some some little video snippets that I'm gonna try to turn into something. So look out for that. Um, if not, pretend I never said this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're gonna make them. You're gonna um, put them together. We're gonna make you. But yeah, it was a great. Uh, it was a great play. I've, this is my second time playing. <coughs> um, I got. I had to play. I got a. I had another. Um, the first time I played, I got a like combat focused player or like person. Mm-hmm. This time. Uh, not as much, more of a defensive focused thing, but still like build up your defense and then spread out kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so maybe next time I think I want to do like maybe a more peaceful route. 
Maybe do the the fragile frog people, whatever they are. The fragile frog. Yeah. Um. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the 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 problem with with the combat oriented factions in TIs is that if you start going to war with people, people don't let that slide. Yeah. They hold it against you, even if they're like, well, yeah, you know. Like, what's the race that's, um, the, I think it's the Sardok Nor who are, it's literally, I think they're the ones who it's just plus one to all their combat rolls. So, like, your whole ability is just, <laughs> you do better in combat than other people do. And it's like, well, all right, well, if you're ever going to use this ability, you have to go to war with people and you have to attack them. And, and once you, you have attack, to be aggressive. Yeah. yeah and it's once you attack somebody, nobody wants to trade with you anymore. No one wants to participate with you in any way, shape, or form. You know, even if it's in their best interest. You know, whatever they just—it's just—it's difficult. So those those ones are, I would say, are arguably one of the harder race or factions to play. But yeah, and I'll say I'm pretty sure we went like, I can pick this. It doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure we went the first like four five hours before the first attack roll, and it was my PDS mm-hmm. taking one pop shot. Yeah. At uh, was it you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just my PDS taking one little pot shot, and I'm pretty sure it missed. It missed. Yeah. I feel like that's pretty common in TI, though, also, again, because combat is such a, uh, like, people will turn against you. Like, even if it's not, like, if I attack you, like, yes, you're going to have animosity towards me, but everyone else on the table is going to see me as an aggressor. An aggressor, yeah. So no one's going to trust me. Uh, no one's going to want to pair with me and whatnot. Same, so the same problem. So people kind of hold off as long as possible. The other thing, too, is, is that in our game, all of the public objectives up until the last two <clears throat> level one public objectives did not really require anybody to go to fight anybody else. It's yeah. like, hey, spend yeah. five trade goods or have six planets outside of your home world. And, and everybody had enough planets to do that where that wasn't an issue. Uh, and it wasn't until you had to have four planets of a single uh, character type uh, or have three planets that have tech abilities that you had to go outside of your like pre-developed sphere of influence. I will say that's another thing. You, uh, so because it was my second, and I assume mostly because it was his and Isaiah's first play, mm-hmm. did a pre-constructed galaxy, didn't do the the drafting back and forth for the building, which I'm excited to do next time. Um, if we can do us three and Isaiah again, yeah. I feel like we could do it, you know? Yeah, it's the thing is, is that you almost need to run the build one time just to see how it works and then do it again. Because when you're laying out your tiles, there's certain rules like you have to, you can't place a red tile, like a hazard tile around like an, a, with another one. Um, and then like you're only allowed to play, I think if you play an empty space tile or a hazard tile, you have to play a planet tile next. I can't remember all the rules. But it's, it's nuanced enough that as you're trying to kind of like track and you're trying to count like, all right, well, if I'm going to place here and then then this player, then this player, then this player, then it'll be me, and then this player, and this. But you, it's really difficult to predict. And if you don't know what you're doing, next thing you know. Chaos. No, it's not chaos. You end up having to play the better planets that you've been saving for yourself to try to get into your sphere somewhere else. And I don't think that's part of it. Here's the thing. I don't. I don't agree. I think in a in a game where all the players have experience and kind of understand how that piece of the, the that mechanic works, then it's fine because you are all competing in the same space with the same knowledge. But when you have players who don't understand that, they just get screwed. And then it's already a difficult game. That's very. The spaces are very competitive. So now you just got a bad setup in front of you because you didn't understand that one beginning piece. And then you're going to spend the next eight to 10 hours having the best time of your life. Yeah. So what he's saying, Dwayne, is for him specifically next game, he gets three empty hexes around his starting planet. Yep. Three about right. empty systems. <laughs> Take a handicap. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Um, the thing no. we did do, though, is we did draft our... Um, Oh, the factions. The factions. Yeah. Yeah. What was the website you found that you used? Um, I don't even. I don't even. I'll have to look it. Look for it. Mm. It's in the group chat. Yeah. But that if I really find good. it, I'll put it. I'll put it up uh, or in the description <laughs> below. But basically, the website. It's all about 
the TI factions, and it's literally just a essentially faction pack generator. It also does the, um, it'll do like a randomly generated setup. Oh, really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, for the, for the, what is it called? The Galaxy? The Galaxy. Yeah. yeah. But what it basically does is you can choose however many, however many players you're going to have, however many um, factions you want them to have in a pack, uh, if you want the expansion factions in or not, and then you can hit generate, and it'll give each player a different set of whatever number you give them of factions. And I randomized it enough to where to make sure that each of us had a a starter a starter uh, faction, and then two other random ones. So instead of having all of us having to look at all seventeen of the factions, you had a few to focus on and pick from, which I think is overall better than having to look at all seventeen factions until you get to the point that you know them well enough. You can be like, yeah, these are mine. Yeah, if no one cares, I want to be this, you know. Mm -hmm. The other thing, though, is is that once players do know them, you can't just let them pick. There's, like, different drafting rules that I've heard people, like, institute where, like, players are allowed to, like, pick two. And then you go into like different drafting systems where like those go around. So players like, have vetoes kind of thing. I can't remember if it's like vetoes or like you can just like steal them from somebody else. Sardak Noir out. Just stuff like that where like, like, so like I, I comment, I really appreciate it because like my personal favorite is always just doing the Federation of Soul and just building a bunch of carriers and maxing your carriers out. They can, you can get them to sustain damage and you can increase their carrier capacity to eight. So you Whoa. literally just make Holy. these just badass, you know, you know, carrier fleets with multiple lives. Yep. And um, so I'm just used to playing that one. I played that probably more than anyone else. But like, if I'm not allowed to, it's it makes it better. Yeah, I think it's fun too. Like part of my favorite thing in games is variety. Your game has variable setup, you know, uh, variable board, variable actions depending on. Like, you know, each game you're playing. I love that stuff. There's know? like nothing consistent about TI except for how fun it is. Yeah. What'd you think? I thought it was great. I really liked it. I mean, our game was seven and 45. Seven hours, 45 minutes. From start to finish, including. Including food. Oh, yeah. So yeah, probably break. like six hours. Seven, I'm sorry. Seven hours. No, did we, st- does that, did that include lunch? No, that's not including lunch. Uh, okay, did that include the time that I spent prepping dinner? No. Okay, so seven forty-five. Seven forty-five with everything. Okay, because I had, <clears throat> I had an hour timer running constantly, just to like take a picture of the board state, just to see how everything was going. For making some content. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking dying over here. I know. Do you okay? Seriously. <laughs> you got what I had last time. I don't know. And allergies are contagious. Um, it's the cedar. But yeah. <gasps> in the seven hours that we were playing. Cedar. I, I hardly know her. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. Sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> in the seven hours that we were playing, I was never bored. Like, Dude, I was vibing, dude. You could see me. It was a lot of fun. I'm a little bit of a dancer. If you guys ever get to play with me <laughs> and I'm like having a good time, you'll just see my shoulders start shimming a little bit. Especially if there's especially if there's like music on in the background. I'm just like, ooh. I'm just glad the as the guy sitting next to you that you sat down. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a stander upper also in very oh like intense God. games. I'll stand up and stare like straight down at the board. Man, Do it does it ever help me win? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh does, it does good for my confidence, though. I feel like I'm doing something when I stand up. Yeah. Um. But I feel like, uh, do you guys have anything else to say about it? I don't know. It's a great experience. I'm looking forward to doing it again. Looking forward to, uh, we didn't incorporate uh, Prophecy of Kings, <coughs> um, which is unfortunate because it does add like some of the key ex- like pieces. Like third edition, you just had little tokens that you would put on the spaces. And every time you entered the space, you'd flip the token and do whatever it did. Uh, which is great because like one of them was a was a supernova um, or a black hole I can't remember and your oh, whole, no. whatever entered that space that's unfortunate gone 
That'd be so frustrating. Gone. So you just like you couldn't like you couldn't go like trouncing around with your giant ass fleet. Um, you had to go carefully, all, all willy nilly. Yep. And then also when you would go to like with your take fucking war sons, uh, yeah. singular war. His son. starting war son that started <laughs> on the board. Look, that's all I had. I had one war son. Um, but uh, also when you do invasions. When you go onto planets, you have to do so. Like empty space would have a token on it, and then the other ones would have planets on them. They'd be on the planets. So if you wanted to land on a planet, you potentially could have ground forces to resist you, or there you'd come into a space and there'd be fighters or something like that from like the ground, basically like come and fight you. Okay. So you couldn't do like we did and from the like, native civilizations. Exactly. That's so you, cool. So you couldn't just roll around with like a carrier with one guy on it and be like, Bloop, this is mine now. Like you couldn't do it. Um, you had to go much more heavily armed. So the way that fourth edition incorporates that is that the, the, the cards that have different like character types, like culture, cultural, industrial hazardous have like, I think they have like different decks that you pull from something like that. But the biggest problem with prophecy of Kings is that it was like, it's all or nothing. You can't play with like just oh, a pieces of it. A piece of it. Like I wanted to play with just that. I didn't want to have to deal with like the leaders. Um, oh, or the, I the forgot mechs about or some of the other stuff. Yeah, you have the you have your leader, your agent, and then yeah, your mechs, right? Yeah, the mechs are a new ground troop. Um, I mean, and they're cool and they're fun, but it's just one of those things where like, especially if you're playing with new new players, yeah, like more it's overhead. Like, God, it's just more stuff to try to explain to a person. Um, so, but definitely looking forward to being able to, to, to expand that experience and, and, and see what that looks like for sure. Um, well, oh, and I won. He did win. Uh, fairly, barely, fairly, fairly, also. but barely. It was tight. It was, if tight. we had finished that round, if you know, cause well, so either of us would have won. What happened? Me or Sebastian would have won. What, what happened was. What happened was my home system got taken, so I was out of the game regardless. So I these just didn't two, have enough, oh, yeah. I didn't these, have enough juice in me. These two were neck and neck. Like it was one of those things where if, <clears throat> if we got to the end of the the, the turn, um, either of them had more or less what they needed to be able to win. And he was playing as the Nalu Collective, collective, which had the zero initiative marker. So he was going to guarantee to go first. So if he had the opportunity, he was going to win. There was nothing anyone could do about it. Um, he was gonna win. Except my home system was taken, so I couldn't. Score. What we got to happen is we got the other player who had most of what was necessary in order to be able to win, could have scored the extra two points in the last round to go to war with him, and they just tore each other up. They were handing planets back and forth. He was trying to get to a point where he could could get um a certain number of it um. Uh, rep was it no uh, it was influence influence uh, to be able to spend to get this thing, and in the process took over his home world so he couldn't score so they decimated each other. He was actually still earlier than me in the reputation track, but because he ended up not having enough influence in order to take the objective, I had had the political card. I was able to score an objective mid round. And then I was able to score the second one. So I gained four points. I yeah. would have won if I had the diplomacy and as, tile. And as much mm -hmm. as I was trying to have Isaiah give me the game. <laughs> or not diplomacy. Uh, P politics. Politics? Mm -mm. Speaker? Um, it's in the fucking name of the game. In Imperi oh, Imperium. The Imperium card, yeah. yeah. The Imperium. No, I'm sorry. Imperial. I had the Imperium, not the politics card. I had the Imperium card. Yeah. Yeah. I would have won if I had that. Well, tile. as much as I was trying to just have Isaiah give me the game, <laughs> I did not want to just like let you guys go out and be like, oh, cool, that's it. So I said, you know what? I'm throwing all my ships at them. And I just I threw one big old fleet at a big old army of Dwayne's. Didn't work out. Threw another one at Kevin's. Did not work out either. Nope. No, it worked. You, you took what I needed to win. Did I? Yeah. You took one of my planets yeah. that dropped me under the 16 okay. that well, I needed. I just did as much damage as I could do because I knew I wasn't going to win. So I was like, you know what? Chaos time. <laughs> it was great. Worked out. Yeah. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And we're going to move on now. Speaking of <laughs> uh, lists of stuff and Twilight Imperium and money spent on games, 
I have a neat little segment for these guys. You may have noticed we have some little whiteboards here. Welcome to the Board and Scale Trivia Section segment, whatever beep, it's beep, called. Beep. Beep, beep, beep. Wait, whoops, I messed it up. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Come on down You've to the been Board and Scale the Trivia board. Section. Beep, 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 beep. I think his was better. I think it was too. Yeah. Kind of hit, hit that. <laughs> nah. um, it's better than okay. rapping. Okay. So this okay. is pretty simple. I have three questions. Uh, two of them. Two of them are basically just knowledge that you have or you don't, and you get a point from it. Oh, boy. The last one is going to be who gets closer. Okay. Uh, it will be the tiebreaker. If you all, if you have the same amount of points, or it might just be the winner of the game for whoever gets closer and gets the point. Is it closer without going over? No. Okay. Thank God. Just closer. Price is right. Ruin the world. Okay. Close is still going so, over. No, it's just fucking closest. The first question for this. All right. What rank is Gloomhaven currently on the BGG overall rank list? Do, do, do. I don't have that one. We're going to do this one again. Oh. You already wrote down? Yeah. You fucking it, know it. I think so. It may have changed. If it changed, I want to be sad. Half the time is gone. You good? There's a timer? Yeah. The timer is just the, that track. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, let's see your answers. Show the show the beautiful people in the camera. I think it's number two. I can't read it on there. That's it you've says got number two. two. What do you have on there, <laughs> D Weezy? I wrote eleven. Don't change Ooh. it. Eleven? I see the the thought process was. I didn't. I was like, I feel like it's not as high as I think it's gonna be. No, so it was ranked number one for the longest time, and I knew that. And then brass. Bumped it off. I don't have a, a, a eh, so I'm gonna use the sensor button for you guys if you're wrong. So Dwayne, wrong. I'm not gonna use sensor. That was kind of lame. That was lame. It's all right though. Kevin, also wrong. Oh really? Did it drop to three? It dropped to three. Who took over? Bonus point. If you can take a guess at who took over, you already know who's number one. Mm. Who's number one? Who's number one? Brass Birmingham. Brass Birmingham. But who Who's overtook Gloomhaven to rip that number three spot? We should, should we write this one down? You don't have. What do you think? Oh God! Pity point since you guys both got the the question wrong. I thought. How about how about, how about a, how about just a three two one? We answer at the same time. Three two one. Great Western Trail. I was gonna say Ark Nova. Okay, you're both mm. wrong. Ark Nova's close. Ark Nova is currently number four. I mean, GWT is like further down. It's in the top. Great Western Trail's like, yeah. I don't know. It's lower. Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Wow. Oh, that's right. Pandemic the Pandemic Legacy, Legacy Season crazy. 1. Crazy. Yeah. Zero points for your boys over here. Not real I, gamers. I got, call, I got pretty close with the two. Doesn't matter for like, this one. Well, Does not matter you. for this I one. I need your energy okay. for this next one. Now, Kevin, I kind of feel a little bit like this is unfair now that I was informed that you were an experienced Twilight Imperium player. Oh. How many factions are there total? In the base game. In the base in- game. In the base game of Twilight Imperium. How many factions are there? I think we're good. <clears throat> I think you said it earlier too. So. Okay, go ahead. Seventeen. Oh shit. Seventeen. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did I did know that though Yeah Good job fellas yeah, Wow that was a great one <laughs> Did I say it earlier? <laughs> yeah you did What a When we were talking dude. about the, the website Yeah you're like Yeah you can do all 17 of And them. the last one This is a who <coughs> gets the closest What is the dollar value Of the global board games market For 2023 the total amount of this money, is like QE, the total amount of money in the global board games market for 2023. It's money spent, money earned. Okay, okay. Money oh, eaten. Jesus, man. This is a how close you get. 
We'll put the timer back on. Boop, boop, boop. Dwayne doesn't know. Boom. Dun, 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 dun. Take a guess. It's whoever gets close. Er. Good? Mm, All bueno? Oh, oh, timer back on for cut. <laughs> right, we're going to go that one. Right, I picked yeah, one of two numbers. We're going to go with Okay, it. go ahead and show the camera. Just, right. And say what you wrote, because I don't know if they can see it. One billion dollars. One billion for Kevin. Dwayne? Yep. One point four billion dollars. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Kevin, you should not have changed your answer. Was it two? Thirteen point zero six billion dollars. Thirteen billion yes. dollars. This is by FortuneBusiness.com. That's crazy. The board game industry. The board game industry global market was brought thirteen billion dollars, yes. and it's projected to do twenty three. This year, well, there's so many and projected games. to do 30 by 2030. There's well, so much it's, shit, though. Like that, like there's also this thing called inflation. Inflation is probably a big old markup on it. Um, I mean, just think about think about how much you used to pay for. So, like, if you're in the crowdfunding space, look at what has happened in the crowdfunding space. Just in places like shipping alone, like that's a factor, right? That goes into that, right? So, um, the cost of like every, God, every damn crowdfunding thing I've had in you know in the last like two years are like the cost of cardboard's gone up three hundred percent. You're like, all right, it's so, probably why fucking <laughs> Kanban is yeah, I know. twenty goddamn so, dollars because all that cardboard. So this is this is from uh, FortuneBusinessInsights.com. You can you know take that with a grain of salt. Google right? it. Last year, it was. Or not last year, 2022 was 11.88 billion. Sorry, I didn't finish saying that. <laughs> 11.88 billion. But that's insane. That's just 13 billion dollars for board games. I so that I mean I said it's global, right? So there's this global. Well, and there's also questions about like what do we can like what's all being considered in manufacturing that, right? costs. Well, so well, that's an interesting thing because like profits gained there versus what's gained by the end consumer, um, the things like all right, so like all right, so Black Potion, right? So Black Potion makes money on liquor sales, alcohol sales, right? Um, in the store, uh, rentals for their spaces, other things. Is that considered a part of the board game industry because they are a board game bar store? I I wouldn't think so. I don't know. It depends on the metric. It, how it are depends they on yeah, and that that's one of the things I was thinking about because I was like, how far is it going? Right? Is it taking that into account? Right? Like the kind of the final step, or is this mostly like every dollar that's spent during manufacturing and shipping and well, but you know, you employee salaries for people that work in board game factories. Right. Like. But all of that is comes from the price that we pay for games. Right. So $100 that you pay for a game is distributed amongst all of those other additional costs. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, they wouldn't make money and this wouldn't work. So, you know, it's just interesting to me because you think, like, what was the most successful crowdfunding campaign for a board game in 2023? Frosthaven. No. I oh, no, that so. wasn't 23. I think it was Marvel Zombies, maybe. Castle Burgundy? Seven? No. Wonderland's seven. War? Mm -mm. Not to interrupt you again. No, no, I just, again. no, I think it was about like seven. I think, and they made like seven million. And, and um, Marvel? Yeah, I think it was like seven million, something like that. Um, and then um, the new Awakened Realms just had uh, a campaign that uh, set some records. Uh, the new Nemesis, uh, Retaliation. Yeah. <coughs> I think actually may have set the record for 2023, and it's somewhere around seven million as well. Um, this one, Marvel yeah. United, two point eight. No, that's United, not no Marvel Zombies. Oh, at any rate, it's I'm like seven million dollars. It's like the high end is like seven Crazy. million dollars, and that's one game. And I got that. That's one game, but billion, right? That's a, lot. a billion. That's a lot. Is it's a lot of zero nine hundred ninety nine million plus one more million, right? So you're you're saying the, the one of the most successful crowdfunding campaigns only makes seven million dollars. That's fucking wild. Yeah, but then again, like what? I was looking. At, oh, we played Libertalia last night, mm -hmm. and uh, at first print run, 
and copy. And, you know, they got the number on there. 20, 25,000 copies. They made it 25,000 copies in their first just print run. Just that run. Just the, their first first print run. They're yeah. like, we believe it. It'll work. And 25,000. And they don't do crowdfunding or anything like that. They just like, they did the market research. And I know that's something that Jamie and, and the crew are really proud of, that they do that really well. But So those are paid for by them and made. Yeah, they, they front all the costs. They probably take business loans and stuff like that if they don't um, have the, the, the upfront currency. But... <laughs> Thirteen billion dollars. Yeah, it's a lot of money for for board games. That's a lot of guacamole. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Money. I wish I had that much money. What would I do with that much money? I would just buy. I didn't even get to say it because we we kind of went to, into the discussion. <coughs> but that does mean that Dwayne wins. He does being closer with his one point four. Well done. Point four over. Hey, at least what, you want. What made you change it from two billion? I peeped over at. I, yeah, I was at. I don't know. I was thinking again. There's in that space where I was like, seven million is the most expensive, like the most money made by a crowdfunding. You were campaign. being generous with the two billion. Yeah. Well, I thought I thought I was being yeah generous, and I was like, I remember it being like, well, I had no problem. I had no doubt that it was a billion dollar industry. I just didn't realize it was a thirteen billion dollar industry. Um. Yeah, I don't know. How, what portion of that do you think is the U.S. That's a good question because there are probably a lot. I mean, I don't know. Because how many first like, like big uh, like, obviously you know European countries, they play a lot of board games too, right? They're just not as big size wise, right? I mean, so your biggest two markets, singular markets, are going to be India and China from a pure population point of view. Yeah. So if there are, I mean, there might be an entire board game industry of some kind, shape, or form in India that we just don't know about, Yeah. right? I mean, they've got, like, their Bollywood. So maybe they've got a board game industry, and if everyone bought $1 worth of board games, that's... <laughs> that's a billion. It's all, yeah, it's a, good, it's a billion already. Um, and if every Chinese person, you know, being a good, loyal citizen of the uh, the, uh, the PRC... <laughs> buys a buys a copy of Go so they can learn how to take down the the the, the great Western Devil. <laughs> Does that count? I guess those are board games, technically. <laughs> Better Welcome dead than to the red. geopolitical portion of the podcast. Hey, we're talking about money. We're talking about finances. We're talking about global economies of board games. You brought it up. Well, would you invest in Simon if they went if they became a public company? No, I I would not I, buy stock. I pay in people to figure out what to do with my money. Oh, yeah, I, I invest myself and lose it all myself. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just, just go to Fidelity and say, "Here's money." I you use Fidelity. Make this better for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, make sure you're investing in a in an IRA, Roth, or a traditional. Or put it all under your mattress. And then light the mattress on fire. That'll definitely work. Absolutely. Um, but that'll that'll complete the quiz portion of the podcast. Can't and we'll, lost. Okay. <laughs> Kevin has you a had crazy to lose win something rate. Today, right? I know you had to lose something. I'm good at trivia. Um one of us has is. a PhD. And uh, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to you know let me know what and you guys lost. <laughs> let me know what you guys thought of that little portion of the trivia. If it was fun, if you got any of the answers right, if you were surprised by the 13 billion dollar number, um, leave a comment below. Chump let change. us know. Uh, we might. And if you like it, maybe we'll do this. Yeah, maybe this can be a consistent segment. We'll that never we never do. do it again. Um, I mean, he literally bought whiteboards, guys. Look at that. There, and these are glass, actually. Like, this is not cheap. I wouldn't call this, it glass. I mean, it's glass. It's like I mean, it's glass. This glass. went towards the 13 billion. That is that is the that is a centimeter. True. That is the smallest amount it could be into the threshold of being glass <laughs> that it could be. That sounds like glass. Tell me this doesn't sound like that's glass. It's cold. Cold rip, to the touch. Rip 13, users. 13 billion dollars went into this. Yeah. I mean, technically. This is a little board game industry expenditure. Not that they know of. Well, you know? again, that's one of my problem with the idea of like when you say like what are they counting? Like it's I I I'm sorry. Me taking the dub. I no, I did. You did. Yes. And and you got a, a cash prize of 
zero dollars and zero cents, which is Whoa. adding to that thirteen billion. Someone's got sour grapes over here because he didn't <laughs> win the trivia. I uh, should have stuck with two billion, <laughs> dude. Uh, it's I thought I thought I did not think you were. Why did you pick one point four? Because did you just think it I has was, to be a billion dollars? Wasn't that the number you picked? I wasn't. Last, no, I wasn't, was 1. 4 million, I wasn't gonna go with a <clears throat> with just a straight whole number. I had to go. <laughs> I had to go with a point something. Yeah. It'd yeah, be crazy if you pulled four. out like 14, mil- 14 billion because oh, it was yeah. like thirteen point zero six. I was I thought I was crazy going for a billion. You thought that was way too high? I thought it was higher than it was going to be. I didn't know how much higher, but I thought I was like, damn, that's kind of Yeah, you were like eight times under. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. Did you know if I gave you five thousand dollars a day? And you didn't spend a dime of it. You just put it into a bank, and it didn't. It didn't have any like interest. You just you just put it there. Next day, you got five thousand dollars. You put it in that bank. Do you know how long it would take before you had a billion dollars? Twelve years. Twenty five years. Off the top of my head, I think it's four hundred and twenty three. Oh my God! Years, years. That's insane, dude. Yeah, twelve years to me was a really long time. Yeah. So, but like, okay, like, because a billion, a billion, billion, that's a million ten times. You know how many? No, it's not. No, that's ten million. It's not a hundred. A hundred, dude. It's a thousand millions. It's a thousand millions. He's not good at math. I'm not good at math whatsoever. You know what? Honestly, next topic. <laughs> <laughs> no. But Hold, please. And we're back. <laughs> I don't have another topic. What about you, fellas? Uh, we're in the free flow. We're in the free flow moment. We're in the free flow moment. I got uh, I got another another wrap up one. If we want to kill some time, yeah, it's pretty much a wrap up at this point. Okay, well, uh, we're out of time. Producers are yelling at us in, in the back. Are they? Yeah, Is she sleeping. Probably. No. So you don't want to do Whoa. another one? You don't want to do? Another no, we're good topic? for another topic. Wrap this shit up. So last week we talked oh, about oh my uh, god our favorite IP. Get out of the studio. <clears throat> crossovers. What about like the worst IP crossovers? Queen's Gambit. <laughs> Queen's Gambit. On, honestly, it's kind of cringe, to be honest. It is kind of cringe, right? It's, it is. It's it's whack chess. It's like, just a it's just a giant cash grab. I mean, like, all of those are giant cash grabs, right? Yeah. Well, literally, it's like from the Netflix original. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got Anya Taylor Joy on the box. You buy it just for that. You know, you, you you're know, never gonna play it. They they probably would have had a better time if they literally just sold a chess set that had Queen's Gambit on it, like on the chess, like on the just the 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 box, just like a regular fucking chess set. Yeah, maybe the black squares are like a thematic darker red color, something like, right, yeah. something subtle, some kind of like ooh, this is niche. But um, there was like sales in in. Um, chess sets like skyrocketed when that show came out, so they could have, you know, Posers. rode that wave. But nope, <laughs> instead they made a made their own board game. I have been crap at chess for years, and I have a little ten dollar board, and that's what I play with. Everyone's like, "Oh, I want to be like Queen's Gambit." I really enjoy chess. Actually, it's kind of like it's relaxing, dude. There's yeah. like no stress to it, and I can't get mad. Like, I can't get mad losing chess because it's just like, I, I fucked up. You played better than me. You literally played better than me. Like, there's no other factor. There's no luck. Yeah. It's just damn. It's a pure strategy game. And Well, I, technically, there's a slight bit of luck because there is a statistical on, like, that white. That uh, the, the first player does win slightly more often. Kind of fucked up that white goes first. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> when was that game made? <laughs> Long time ago, yeah. three million. BC. We got to come up with a, um, you know, some kind of like the the black player gets an extra turn or something like that, right? Black like player gets an extra piece. Ooh, an extra piece, an extra pawn, half a pawn. 
<laughs> Don't say the black player gets an, an extra piece. Fucking <laughs> Mac 10. And with that, Kevin is going to end the show permanently. <laughs> all pieces on all pieces on the black player get like mini little do rags. Oh, okay. <laughs> He can say that. Guys, thanks for watching. <laughs> this has been a weird episode of the Board and Scale podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as always, I've been your host, Sebastian, along with, sorry, co-host Sebastian, along with Kevin. <laughs> and? Number one trivia winner ever. I'm telling you right now, if, if I don't win every trivia uh, segment that we do, I will sell muffin time. <laughs> also, <laughs> he's only got to lose one game and he sells it. Also, who's gonna buy that trash though? Extra, extra <laughs> shout out. I'm feeling bold right now. An extra thing to the trivia, kind of on all of us. We're thinking of doing a kind of a boudoir calendar. Photo shoot. Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, so if any of you guys are interested in that, you know, go ahead and comment um, saucy or something like that. So we know that you specifically got to this part. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah. I imagine this man wearing nothing but a board game box. It's a bunch of comment. Don't do this shit. <laughs> Um, wow. If you guys want to see uh, some of our content on Instagram, follow us there. Uh, Board and Scale. We have Old Wayne. I'm thinking of changing mine. Oh, what to what? I don't know. They're going to be at the bottom. Just look in the description. <laughs> but one more big shout out to 210 GameCon. Again, we're really excited for that. Bye, guys.